Hi, Scott. Uh, excited to be with you today. Today we are with uh, uh, Scott Mitchell, uh, founder and CEO of Stud.io. Scott been working uh, for a few years on very exciting projects, redefining what's possible with cold form and steel structures, using technology, generative design. Can you tell us more, Scott, about the new things you are working on? Yeah, absolutely. And, and glad to be here with you, Amr. So yeah, I'm the founder and CEO at Stud.io. We've been around for about uh, four or five years now. Our main focus is to enable architects to build their boldest ideas. Ideally, there's no change that has to happen from the architecture model to what gets built. Preserving design intent for geometrically complex projects is, is what we excel at. .io is, is really focused on expanding what people can do with fabrication machines. And really what that means is sort of taking machines that have built-in capabilities that you know people are using them for very specific use cases and taking these machines and exploring what may be possible. Um, if you kind of think more creatively about how to use the machines and then deploying that on some of the most complex projects being built today. Uh, we went together to the Sphere. Can you tell us more about that project and how it's transforming user experience uh, in a very immersive way? and what's your role in it and uh, how you utilize technology to do something very efficient? Yeah, so, so we worked on the collar of the MSG Sphere. It's an interesting point where we were leveraging some of what we had already learned in the, you know, the previous two years of the company, the first two years of the company. But we also learned a lot um, about our process and, and I think it was one of the more successful uses of our technology. Our scope was specifically the collar around the sphere. So the sphere sits on this foundation and this collar. Uh, the sphere itself has its own complexity. Obviously, that's the thing that, that everyone's drawn to, but it, the, the collar that goes around the base has its own complexity to it. So it's this kind of curving surface around the building, and it's also twisting and, and changing shape as it moves around the building. So that sort of geometric complexity is exactly the kind of thing that our technology is really valuable for. How did you do QA, QC during construction to ensure that what you're building prefab will fit perfectly on site? So we, we actually got brought into the project when a lot of it was already built. So we started with a 3D scan of the building and, and that was really important because it was actually off. You know, the, the as-built was, was several inches different than the, the architectural model. So we used a 3D scan, generated a new model uh, from that, and then based our design off of, of that you know, actual as-built model. That's awesome. So what are the lessons learned for that project that you will carry over for other projects? And what was the biggest challenge for the job? So we, we were brought in a little bit later in the project than sometimes we are, and they had an idea of how they were gonna build it already, but it was over budget. Uh, it was going to be over budget. So they wanted it to be a GFRC, which is glass fiber reinforced concrete, um, which is a relatively um, expensive system. And so we were brought in to, to look at, are there other ways that we can build this while maintaining design intent? One of the things that we're really good at is just quickly generating entire buildings, models of entire buildings, which you can use to analyze cost, uh, analyze performance, all that sort of stuff. So uh, Scott, you've been doing great work over the years f with uh, prefabrication. How the client brought you to this uh, project as a sphere? Stud.io was, was asked to, to help with this project specifically because they, you know, as they were finishing up the sphere and getting to the collar below the sphere, they wanted to decrease the cost. Uh, it had originally been designed as a GFRC system, which is a, a relatively expensive system. So we were brought in to analyze, you know, GFRC versus other options and, and find a more efficient way to maintain design intent. For years, we've been doing steel framing. Uh, what is the new in your workflows that could really unlock the potential for empowering our architects and designers to design free spaces and more humane and uh, free geometries? So what's really interesting to us is you know, we, we just get excited about computational design and digital fabrication and especially when we have access to a machine that we can really mess around with. So steel stud roll forming machines is one that we've spent a whole lot of time with. You generally use those to build walls that turn at 90 degrees. That's what they're made for. But what's, what's really exciting to us is it turns out that a lot of these machines that are, that are meant for mass production of, of that sort of thing or a particular thing, a standardized uh, building component, they just happen to have capabilities that can be used for other things as well. 
And and it's almost like a game that you might play with with the machine. Or sometimes we say that we we'd like to like you know, start using a machine and learn how to play it like you play an instrument. And you you come up with with new ways to to use a machine that people haven't thought of before. Almost like you're composing songs on on a machine to some extent. And um, so so steel stud revolving machines. That's we've done all kinds of stuff with that from the MSG Sphere to the Fontaine Blue Casino down the street to Disneyland, Nintendo Land, all kinds of really exciting projects. And we're able to do that because we've been basically messing around with the machine for, for like six years now and have found ways to take what the machine can do, rejig it a little bit so that we can build complex geometry, curved geometry, um, like the MSG Sphere. Tell us more about how your methods as a Sphere can support sustainability and uh, saving uh, on materials and other items? Yeah, I think especially for something like the Sphere, these complex projects tend to get made twice. Like people go out, they try to build it, they get something wrong, they try to redo it, and they eventually land on something that's working. Um, with, with our process, everything's automated. There's no, you know, there's no human error in the fabrication or the assembly. And so I think the, the real sustainability aspect here is that you just build the building once. It's right the first time. Um, obviously, that's, that's also good for schedule and cost as well. But unlike something that's stick built, the machine takes the material and just cuts what you need. It's not like buying a bunch of parts off the shelf, cutting off a couple feet, and throwing it out. You hit a great point here to reduce rework. So you, it's really a great example of how you're redefining, taking something that's been traditionally been done or machines that can only do uh, straight lines and you make it curves. Can you tell us more about the details you've been developing to go around using the same machine, but different software and a different mindset? We want to, would love to see you for many of our construction sites to implement that mindset of thinking creativity with a little bit of creativity. You can make with the same ingredients, something totally different. So, so me and, and pretty much everyone on the Studio team comes from a background of computational design. So working parametrically for, for building design. And when you, when you look at an individual connection of one piece to another piece, they're generally very simple. So um, we start by, by keeping things very simple. So a lot of our projects, especially our steel frame projects, use like two different details. But when your details are parametric, so in other words, the, the main parameter in, in most of our details is, is what's the angle at which two components are, are connecting to each other. And it turns out just with that, you know, a couple connections, limited parameters, you can start to do a whole lot. But you have to, you don't start at a big, the big scale, you start at the small scale of how individual pieces get fabricated and how they connect together. Can you tell me more about your vision to the future and how we can utilize prefab and how your work, how you see your work going in the future, taking it from all the exciting projects you're doing here in Vegas into other areas and into other building types as well? You know, going into the future, we, we're definitely going to keep doing these really exciting projects like the MSG Sphere. But a big focus of ours has been taking our software, which is the most versatile software in the world for generating steel frames um, and also generates other types of components. But its focus has been really on steel frames. And we want to take that versatility and also make it usable. We want more people to have access to that so that you know, designers who are designing buildings under the perceived constraints that things need to be at right angles, things need to be vertical, can start to play with, with what, what might be possible. If, if changing that geometry doesn't actually increase cost significantly. What advice you give to builders and architects who are working on starting their journey with prefab, especially with cold, uh, cold form steel and other elements uh, to take into consideration when they start their project early on? Yeah, I think maybe a lot of people see prefab as just taking what you were doing on site and doing it off site. And it, it's a lot more than that. Um, because you're, you're moving from reliance on skilled labor to a reliance on machines that are doing stuff really accurately and quickly. So first, first step is, okay, let's move off site and start using machines. But once you're doing that, if you start using intelligent software to, to sort of explore what machines can do, it turns out there's a whole bunch more possibilities for what you can build. It's not just one-to-one with what you could have built 
you know, the traditional way. And this is clear, each, each of your project is really unique and different. So how you can adapt your technology to, to that specific project is something very unique. Yeah. Thank you so much, Scott, for sharing all your great knowledge and the, the great things you've been working on. You're pushing the limits of how this industry can go with these unique shapes. And I'd love to see uh, the great things you're going to do in the future, especially with taking this into other building types as well, like uh, affordable housing, multifamily or commercial. Awesome. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much.